Hello! How you all doing, Mike Brelly? Hope you're doing well as always. It's only Wednesday, so it means it's another Q&A Wednesday with me. You probably all know already, head over to Facebook, submit a question, I will answer it the best way I can, and you get happy because you, no, you get to hear me. I get happy because I've helped you. It's just happy, 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 you know? So uh, yeah, if you're that lazy, you can submit the question in the comment section below, but still go to Facebook and like the page because it makes me happy. See, again, we're happy. Anyway, stuff this, first question. <laughs> CPO Mendez 117 asks, and is that your real name, by the way? Hey Mike, I have a question about picking hand technique, which I'm sure other players may also be thinking to ask. What is the best way to develop a better picking technique to keep your movement to a minimum and not pick sloppy when going through scales? I used to have a pretty tight technique being able to pick 16th notes at 160 to 170 BPM, but in the last few months it's become sloppier, i.e. my pick has started moving about between my thumb and index when I try to pick faster and my pick keeps hitting other strings. Alongside that, it feels like my right wrist has gotten weaker as I find it hard to maintain a constant speed when picking. I remember you talking about your technique in a previous video and how you spent a ton of time work on it, so you probably know the right direction to go with this. I think I will need a guitar to answer this question, don't I? Um, yeah, the infamous picking hand. Um, it's something I'm always working on, like I've mentioned before. So, some ideas I can give you, um, I mean a lot of people like a very you know, a pointy pick or something, I use Dunlop 1.5mm, I have for about 15-16 years and it's so damn hard for me to change over to something else, so I'm just going to white fight it, this is my pick. Um, but they do wear out very quick unfortunately, um, and when, when it is, it's got no point now and it makes it a bit hard, but um, you know, obviously holding the thumb and index finger or trigger finger, what way you want to look at it. Um, and you want to be mm. super, super relaxed, ideally, you know. I tense up still when I'm going really, really fast. But if you think of a mandolin player, and let me turn this overdrive off. Um, if you think of a mandolin player, they've got about to sit there and they're just doing that for ages, you know, so. You know, and uh, I'll probably have slowed down a little bit now, started talking or sped up or something like that. The time has probably gone hey while, but um, I'm still just keeping down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up on one string. So if you're, if I'm doing this, I'm tensing up straight away, alright? So you need to be. You need to be completely relaxed. Now, the problem comes when you're changing to another string. That's when the problem happens. So, you know, slowing down, of course, is very important. But you want to um, kind of tilt the pick a bit, I think. You know, you don't want to be completely flat. You want to be kind of like on a, um, a 45 degree angle, I suppose, you know, so you're kind of slicing through as opposed to being, you know, if that's a string, Instead of being flat like that, hopefully it's coming across like that, you want to be slightly turned. Um, so like putting the pick on the side of your finger uh, and then kind of going that way. You know, that's how I do it. I'm on the side like that. Uh, I'll try and do a close up so you can see that better. Um, and I'm not holding it like that or something like that. Um, and yeah, just pick a scale, you know, like you can do your pentatonics. Um, instead of just going they're doing that, you know, kind of go down four or down six and back up again. So if I do four. You know, and do it cleanly. Um, or if you've got like an exercise, um, I kind of like change it up a bit. So like legato and then picking. Um, I'm going 5, 7, 5, 7, hammering on down, pulling off, something like that, and then back up again. Yeah, so. 5, hammer, 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 pull off, pick 7, pull off to 5. 
but I'm sure you can see it from there. But instead of picking each string once, I will, when I go to the third string, I'll down up pick that. It just, you know, works on the picking a little bit, change it up, instead of it just being stale, all legato, all picked, you know. That'll be picking everything. So it's just cool to, you know, change it up a little bit. But of course, don't go fast. And pick it from the wrist. Just do it slowly and work your way up, the classic thing. But uh, yeah, definitely kind of slicing through the string more. Um, trying to do the wrist as much as possible. When you go faster, the forearm might come in a little bit. Um, but just work whatever helps you do. You know, if it helps you, say, to pick like that, then do it. You know, it doesn't help me, but I'm not you, if that makes sense. You know, so work to all the strengths you can to be able to get the desired sound you hear. But um, yeah, you don't want to tense. It's like with singing, like I'm trying to work on my singing a bit more. And if I feel myself tense in my throat, I'm, I'm stopping as I am in it. I, I don't want to be tensing, I want to be relaxed and I'll stop and I'll think about it and change my posture or something like that. And it's the same here, you know, you just got to think, okay, am I, is it hurting? Why is it hurting, you know? Or why, why is the, you're saying about the pick slipping? You try getting um, a different material maybe, you know, I mean this is Delrin and it can get a bit slippy but I'm just so used to it, but you can get the kind of more, um, what's the, it's the Dunlop with the kind of alligator on it as opposed to the tortoise, so it's a different material, um, sometimes feels like a bit of powder on there or something like that, try that, um, or any pick, I'm not endorsed by Dunlop, um, <laughs> so any Petrum company, you know, um, but yeah, just Hopefully those kind of tips are helping you, mate. Manuel asks, how do you get around playing and singing at the same time? I'm able to do strumming and sometimes I can arpeggiate and sing, but in terms of doing lead playing, my brain can't give enough focus to both things at once. So if there was something I could do to help this, that'd be great. Oh, I kind of mentioned singing at the end then, and now I have a singing question, look at that. Um, so, uh, any tips? I mean, some things are hard. One song that comes to mind, um, and I think he only can do it because he's a drummer, is all my life. Um, I have no sound, could I hit sound by um, it? it? The rhythm is so weird because he's doing that. Oh, man. I can't do it, you know, until he goes. Dum, dum, oh, the next one, dum, I'm done, and I'm over the next. Um, so. I would say you could do some classic do re mi's, you know, so you've got your major scale. So the classic do re mi fa so la di do. Could do that and then kind of fart around with it. So do re mi fa do do mi, whatever it is. Da da, or not to say do re mi la la la's or something like that. La 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 kind of doing lead stuff and then playing so so um, let's think of a I want to make a lyric up um, so since you got me I'm coming down all right since you got me I'm coming down since you got me Okay, 
So, there's my little idea of out the lyric. like print now and stuff like that but there's my idea kind of came out of it and then kind of sang what my fingers are kind of doing you know I might have started going off a little bit but since you got me I'm going down since you got me everybody's coming down everybody coming down da -da 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 -da. everybody's coming down there we go Is that helping? Is that giving you ideas? You know, so just start with little things, you know, so la da 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 and you know, getting used to humming or something while your fingers are moving and then develop from there. The strumming thing, yeah, that should be quite easy, I think, but uh, yeah, concentrate on one, then get the other down with it and then mould them together and hopefully you will be a rock star. Rory Holmes asks, out of all your guitars, what's your number one favourite? Um, my, I, I've said it before, unfortunately it's not here, it's at my flat, but my Sunburst Strat is kind of like my dear, dear friend. And um, no, I've done hundreds and hundreds of gigs with her. Um, you know, we've been together since I was 14. You know, so we've been together a long time. So 1996 Strat Plus, it's not here. So because it's not here, I will then say this guitar, the Gibson 345, um, you know, in substitute because the Strat's not here. So this is probably my second favorite now um, because I had wanted it so long. I just look at her and I smile. It's just a glorious, glorious instrument. Um, she's been used in quite a few videos. I'm sure if you have a search you can see some of you haven't seen it played before, but um, Yeah, I've, I've gigged it quite a lot now. I've done some sessions of it as well um, So she's not necessarily getting marked up, but she's getting played uh, She's got the kind of pick scratches now and she's probably a bit of a clean, but I don't really clean my guitars, but um Yeah, so I'll probably go for the for the Gibson 3 for 5 in kind of absence of the Strat not being here Joseph Joestar asks, Do I really need to know music theory to be considered a good guitarist? I've been self-taught and never had any teachings the past six years playing, yet I've been told I was fairly talented, but I won't be any good unless I know music theory. I don't think it's very necessary, but I've been told otherwise. I think it certainly helps, buddy, to uh, know music theory, especially when it comes to playing with other musicians and then be able to have that language to be able to communicate with someone. You know, for example, if you're talking to a drummer and you say, I just want that to be all kind of 16th note rhythms going on there. You know, like, you understand it, they understand it. Or if they say, oh, why don't you try a 16th note rhythm kind of um, rhythmic lick there? You know, you understand what that means, you know, or at least has a, you know, in the ballpark idea of what it means anyway. Um, and then also as well, you can explore the guitar a bit more, I think. Um, now... You no, know, people go on about, say, Jimi Hendrix didn't know theory. He definitely knew his theory. He knew his stuff. You know, I mean, uh, I mean to, from everything, from a scientific point of view as well. Uh, I went to a Roger Mayer talk yesterday at the Cumberland, Cumberland Hotel, um, where Jimmy was basically on his death certificate. It's got his last you know, red, red, well, place to live, uh, being the Cumberland Hotel. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, he was, Roger Mayer was saying about how you know, they would, regarding uh, effects and everything like measure the current from, you know, from the headstock to the input jack and everything in between the neck, length and all that kind of stuff, pickups, all that kind of thing. You know, he knew his stuff on the guitar and also watched the Woodstock improvisational um, clip of him at Woodstock playing just on his own. And he's firing out all chords all over the place, you know, not just a C and G chord, you know, he's doing, you know, no C six slash nine chords and all that kind of stuff. He's he knew his stuff, you know. As well as that, he's doing you know mixolydian to Dory, you no know, modal playing and then harmonic minor playing as well. Yeah, it's, you you hear it first, but then you kind of want to hear it and then find out what it means, so to speak, you know. So then you can explore it even more. So basically, the short answer: it doesn't harm to know some theory, you know. This whole 
if you know theory, it kills your soul. Bugger that, you know what I mean? Like so. I'm just someone, I like learning as much as I can about the instrument, but it's good that you're coming on well, mate, as a player. John the Cat asks, is that your real name? Did your parents christen you with that name? <laughs> How long does it take for your strings to die? I have a very mild allergy to nickel, so my plain strings start to get super gunky after about three weeks. The wound strings last for about a month and a half. Depends how long I've been playing, mate. Um, all my guitar strings need changing, to be honest with you. I mean, the Telecaster, uh, oh, I can't remember the last time I changed this, probably a month or so ago, but they've been dead for, for a good while. I haven't been playing it because, well, it came unsoldered and needed an in input jack. Um, but, um, you know, uh, it depends, you know, what I've got up. You know, if I've got a gig coming up and, uh, you know, my strings are slightly dead, I'll change them, you know. Or I might have, so if I change my strings on a Monday and then the following Monday I get a call to do a studio thing on say the Wednesday, I'm going to change them. Even though the strings have only been on for a week, I'll change the strings for that studio session so they're completely fresh, you know. Um, when I was out in, uh, I did like a week's work of uh, gigs in Nice last year and I was playing, changing my strings every two days, you know, doing a two hour set. And then I would make, still use the same set of strings for the next day, but then they'd be dead. So every two days I was changing. So it just, it depends, you know. Um, I haven't got, I'm not an ultra sweaty person, um, but I, I sweat like everyone else, you know. So, um, but I mean, this gets, the neck on this is disgusting at the moment. Well, not disgusting, because it's kind of looking old and I kind of like that. And I can't bother to clean the neck. But um, yeah, like I say, strings on this are dead. All my, apart from my Les Paul, Oh, this guy changed them recently, but all my even my acoustic, the strings are dead. So um, I try to do it as often as I can. Depends what are coming up. If I no, very rarely I don't have any gigs for a week. But um, yeah, I will try and you know, every couple of weeks like that I change them. There you have it, guys. Hopefully you learned something from that. And even if you didn't submit a question in, um, or I didn't get to your question yet, you learned something new from that. Could most of the time we're all thinking the same thing. Uh, so like I was saying, head over to my Facebook page, give it a go or like and uh, submit a question to me and I'll do my very best to get back to you. I do have a bit of a backlog now. I think the questions I answered today were submitted to me in August time. So uh, yeah, where are we now? Pretty much October. So um, yeah, hopefully uh, I'll get back. I'll try and dive in as much as I can and do everything I can to get to your question. Anyway. Love you all very, very much, and I don't salute with the right hand. What's going on here? I will see you next time. Every Wednesday and Friday, a new video. Mike Bradley signing out. <laughs>